Good morning. What a week we've had. What a month we've had, actually. 21 days of fasting. Um, I don't know what you ate for your, when you broke your fast. I know you were looking forward to it. I ate a half a hamburger and a few fries. I, I just think this fast kind of uh, dwindled my appetite just a little bit, which has probably changed my life, which is good. All right. And, and then we spent three nights in the presence of God, which was awesome. And, and if you've not watched those services, I really I believe that you need to rewatch them. Um, we talked about the first service, You'll Be Called Great. And, and the idea is you're known in heaven as a title of great or least as a Christian. And you can actually become great by just doing two things. Make a decision to start obeying the word and teaching the word. Someone say obey and what? Teach. Teach. So we learn that those who are great in scripture, um, according to heaven, are the ones that obey the word and they also teach it. Obedience is not enough. You are called to pass on your faith to somebody else. Breakthrough for you is not enough. You're called to give breakthrough to somebody else. God make you a conqueror, but he wants to make you more than conquer. Give victory to somebody else. I'm going to understand that. So then we talk about on Thursday night, we got a message from one of the associate pastors at, at Potter's house came in and he says, you're halfway there. And what he's saying is what got you halfway there is going to get you all the way there. And the idea is you've come too far to go back now. I know you might have some pressure right now as you're halfway there, but keep on pressing because God has a destiny for your life. And last night, the message, I mean, not last night, Friday night was don't forget where you came from or don't forget what God has done for you. Praise him for what he's done. Come on, let's give some praise for what he's done. And if you could praise him for what he's done, you're ready for what he's ready to do. Come on, let's, let's praise him just a little bit up. Come on, give him some praise as he's worthy. Come on. He's worthy of it. There's some breakthroughs that you're only going to get when you sacrificially praise your way through. Uh, we, I don't know if we instinctively know this, but I think we do. Because in sports, I, I, when I go to a Dodger game, they always do this. They say charge, right? And, and, they, and usually when we say charge is when we're down by a few runs or we got a few men on base. What we're saying is we want to score. So we don't wait for us to score to cheer. We cheer when we score, but there's such thing as cheering before you score to create some momentum in your life. And if you would do that for the Dodgers, come on, you do that for the Raiders, you do that for the Lakers or the Dallas Cowboys, whoever you cheer for 49ers, all I'm saying is, why wouldn't you do a precursor chair to set the stage for a breakthrough in your life? If it works there, it could work here. But I think as, as human beings, we know that's how it works. Don't wait until you feel like it to start praising God. Some of you right now are waiting to feel happy to smile. There's a time in your life that even though you don't feel like smiling, you're going to have to look yourself in the mirror and give yourself a sacrifice of a smile and say, we're going somewhere. I might not be feeling good right now, but I'm going to give a smile invested in my future right now. You just go, I guarantee you, you look yourself in the mirror like that. It will change your spirit. It will change your destiny. It will change your emotions. Does anybody here know about the secret of praising God? Come on, in your trial, in your difficulty to see a breakthrough. We've done everything we can to prepare. And today we're going we're gonna to do one more thing. And the title of what we're going to be talking about this today is being blessed to the max by giving our first fruit offering. We're going to be talking about giving today in just a little bit. We do a special offering once a year like this, first fruit offering. Uh, and we're going to discuss it and we're going to dive into it. But I remember when we first started this church, uh, and I'll be sitting in a second. I'm going to stand in the whole time, just believe me. But uh, I, I remember when we started this church, uh, God was telling me to start a church in San Bernardino with my wife. And, and we got to San Bernardino as, on a job transfer I walked through the, I, I told Lisa, meet me after work. And we drove through the city. And, and what I wanted to see was there were people hurting and in pain and suffering. Because I didn't want to be in a good neighborhood. I wanted to be in a place that needed some help. 
that we can make an impact. I want to be in a dark place to shine some light. So when I drove through this city, um, it, there was a lot of pain, suffering. I saw people walking, zoned out, lost their mind, graffiti all over the place, yellow tape where there was a drive-by. And, and, I, and I stopped with Lisa, and I go, what do you think, baby? And she goes, I think this is where we're supposed to start the church. I go, okay, well, let's do that. But the problem is I didn't know how to start a church. So I asked God, God how do you start a church? And I, I, clear as day, I heard God tell me, you start a church by loving people. And I go, well, how do you love people? Because I was confused about that. I mean, what do I do? Go around hugging everybody in the whole city? He goes, no, no, you don't, you don't hug them. They might need a hug, but that's not what you're going to do. He said this, love them in a practical way. I go, how do I do that? He goes, what I want you to do is discover their needs and meet their needs. So love is a verb. It's not just a feeling. So I, I remember going with my little girls. It was a hot summer day, and we were knocking on doors, finding needs and meeting them. And one day we... We, after all the, the walk in the streets and knocking on doors and meeting needs, we were driving by a park on 2nd Street. And I was, as I was driving down the park on 2nd Street, I saw a whole bunch of homeless people in the park. And I just felt called, like, just stop one more time. Find out what their needs are and do your best to meet it. And this is what I did. We stopped my little girls. My little girls wanted to go home. They were tired of walking the streets. I go, baby, it's just one more stop. So we stopped, and as we walked, I have my five little girls with me. We're walking towards a group of homeless people, and, and one of them stood up representing them, and he came up to me a little rough. He goes, what do you want? I go, well, I just want to find out what your needs are. We're thinking about starting a church in this area, but there's no need to start a church if we don't know what your needs are and meet them. He goes, Okay. Well, we're hungry. There's no feeding program on Saturday. We're all hungry here. I go, I'll be right back. And what we did was, me and my five little girls, we went to Baker's. It was down the street. And we got a whole, whole bunch of number ones. Not for my girls, but for the homeless. My, my girls were like, what kind of church is this? <laughs> right? We don't get a happy meal, too. Well, no, it's no happy meals at Baker's. It's a different place. No, it's good. We got number one, a burrito fry and a Coke. And I remember coming back and, and what we did was give them the food. And, and some of them were very happy to have it. Thank you so much. But I remember in particular, me and my, one of my little girls, we went over to a, a, a lady that was sitting right next to a wash on 2nd Street. And she was down in there. She's a real person, really hurting. But I think she lost her mind because of the lifestyle she'd been living in. She wouldn't even look up. But I hand her to the meal. She took it. She never said hi. She was broken, hurting. But we showed her some love. We don't do this to get a thank you from them. We do this because we love them. How many understand? So giving is good. Giving is good. It's an act of love. So this is what happened. People started asking us as we're loving people. Not necessarily a lot of preaching. But I've learned this. When people know you love them, they'll finally listen to your message. There's some people that you're going to, you know, that you, they're not even ready to hear a message because they're so hurting and broken and they have the wrong ideas about church and you and, and they're going to try to test you. But we, you know what you're going to do when they test you? You're going to give them more love. You're not going to argue with them, fight with them. You're going to find their needs and meet them. But this is what people start asking us. Where's your church? And we didn't have a building. We didn't have a church service. I go, we don't have one. But when we do, would you come? And this is what everybody in the street started saying. All the neighbors started saying. The drug dealers started saying. The gang members started saying. I mean, the pimps, the prostitutes, everybody. The neighborhood was saying, when you have a church, we'll come. And this is what happened. We finally had our first church service. 500 people from the hood came. 400 of them gave their lives to Jesus as a result. Come on. Of practically loving people right where that. Give God some praise. Giving is good. It's so good. Let's pray, and then we'll get into this. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to talk about a principle in your word that unlocks major blessing in other people's lives and our lives as well. Father, I just thank you, Lord. We're getting ready for the max blessing in our lives so we could be a max blessing for the rest of our lives. This year is going to be a year of growth in every area of our lives so we could be a Father God, help others grow and be the best blessing we can be. Teach us, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. 
I just want to talk to you a little bit first about, about giving is good. And then we're going to talk about what, this, what the Bible says instructs us on this subject of first fruits. It might be the first time you're being introduced to this type of offering. And then we're going to talk about the blessings. Someone say blessings. That actually are attached to this offering. This offering has a command to give it, and it has a command of blessing upon it as well. So I command you to give it, and I command a blessing upon your life if you do. Okay? has two commands on it. But let's talk about giving is good. Giving is good because it is an act of love. Uh, giving is a verb. Say it with me. Giving is a... It's not just an adjective. It's a verb. It's an action word. When me and Lisa were going out, and she was my girlfriend, and I was her boyfriend, I, I just... Showing her love, one of the ways I'll show her love is just buying her gifts. I would like want to buy her gifts everywhere I went to let her know I was thinking about her and she matters to me. Even at 7 Eleven, they would get me. I would go get me a little banana slurpee. How many like those banana slurpees in the summertime? But I'd go get the banana slurpee, and as I'm there, they, they really get you on those counters. They have little flowers and little gimmicks and Cost, stuff that costs 20 cents costs three or four dollars. They're just trying to get your heart's purse strings going. And, and, I, and I remember being there at, at 7 Eleven and it had little plastic flowers. And I said, I want to get one to let Lisa know I was thinking about her. And so I'd get that little flower and then I'd bring it to her. And then she knew that it didn't cost a lot. But just the look on her face when I gave her that little plastic flower. She would say, thank you so much for thinking about me. And then what she would do is keep the flower on her dresser and, and, and maybe put some perfume on it. And, but it would remind her of the love I have for her. And this is what I've learned. The more you love someone, the more you give to them. How many understand that? So giving is an act of love. And God showed us that in John 3, 16. It says, for God so loved the world that he did love so much that he gave. This is what he did. He goes, I love you, and I gave what he gave, his only son, to die on a cross for our sins, to give us the gift of eternal life. One of the greatest ways to show love for God and others is through giving. One of the greatest ways to show love to our community is through giving. We have people that are hungry on our streets. And last year, we gave over 87,000 bags of groceries to people that are hungry. And, and as a team, we've done that. And, and this is what's happening 87,000 bags of grocery were given out because there's people actually living in homes that are food insecure. Little boys and little girls go to our downtown campus. They'll come to church service, and they'll also leave with a bag of groceries to help their mom or sometimes their mom and dad to just get through that week. We're not, we're not giving them, you know, 10 meals at once, but we're giving them some groceries to get them through that week, and we consistently do that. Last year, we gave over 1.8 million pounds of food. We have a warehouse, and we're giving out food. But because of our ability to give, this is what's happened. Giving is an act of love, and we're showing our love. Now, we have a men's home. That means if someone comes out of prison or they're dealing with a drug addiction, they could break the cycle. We have a place for them to get healed up, trained, and strengthened. We have a women's home and a women's and children's home. We are rescuing mothers that were living in their cars with their kids or been abused and running from couch to couch. They're no longer running from couch to couch. We have a place to go, baby, you don't have to worry about bills. You don't have to worry about clothes. Just get reunited with your kids. Just love them in your transition. We're going to take care of everything. We get them strengthened. We get them strong. We get them building a career. And then we, and then we transition them to our transitional home. We got a transitional home. So now they start paying a little rent and start getting on their feet and, and we give them an independent space. Those things are happening. Right now, the, you know, last year, we opened up a house in Kenya for prostitutes that were getting off the streets of Kenya and we're getting them into a home so they're no longer abused. They could come on, build a business. They could get off the streets. They could get set free, break the cycle. We have an orphanage right now. We're rescuing little boys and little girls and babies. They drop off babies to our, 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 our orphanage. And, and we have a business now that the orphanage started. It's a cafe, and they're learning how to do business. And we're doing all of this because we love people. So we could say easily, 
hey, you're hungry? We're going to pray that God gives you food, okay? But if you have food and they look at through your window and they see a whole warehouse full of food, I don't care how much you pray, that's not the right response. You're supposed to give them some of your food. And when you give them some of your food, you're letting them know we actually do love you. How many, how many get that? So giving is good because it shows love. In Hebrews 13, 1 and 2, it says, continue to show brotherly love. Do not fail to show love. That means don't fail to show love. That word love means don't fail, your, don't fail to be hospitable, to love by showing generosity toward others. Uh, always be ready to give and without smallest of mind. We should never give with a selfish mindset. What I mean by that is, if you want to give some shoes, don't get the most raggedy pair of shoes that you could find. Go, look for some shoes that you would want to wear. You're going to give groceries. Don't give them all the rotten bologna in your fridge. Give them the food that, come on, give them, don't give them the food that has frostbite on it. Go to the grocery store and buy groceries like you were buying groceries for yourself. Come on, that's what we do as a church. So that's how we show love. Someone say, love is a verb. Now, given is good also because given is good because, because it blesses us. Now, I understand this. That sounds kind of self-centered, but it's not. Everything that God does uh, that he tells us to do comes with rewards. God created us to be reward-driven. Say it with me. We are reward driven. Understand this. The greater re the reward, the more we're driven towards it. And what God has done, if you give, I will reward you with more. I will reward you with blessing. Look what Jesus says about giving. And, and this is what he says in Luke 6, 38. He says, give to others and you will receive. It's a law. You will be given much. It will be poured into your hands more than you can hold. You will be given so much that it will spill into your lap. The way you give to others is the way God will give to you. Isn't that interesting? The Jesus is the one that talked about giving here. And he's saying, I've set this up that as you're giving, I'm going to give it back to you. But I'm not going to give you what you gave. I'm going to give you more than you gave. Farmers understand this. You plant seed and then you get a harvest. You don't get a seed back. You get, come on, fruit back. You get seeds back. And all he's saying is, if you understand this principle of giving, you'll always have more than enough in your life. Overflow. Why would God give me overflow? So I can continue to being generous to those who are hurting and broken. God wants you to have overflow. And he wants you to be blessed to the max so you could be a max blessing. How many want to receive that? All God is saying, you can't all give me. You just can't. Okay? So now let's talk about three types of offerings that the Bible talks about. Everything that I'm going to talk to you about is scriptural. You'll see it in scripture. And today we're going to unlock a, a secret to unlock in prosperity, blessing in your life. And it's in the Bible. Three types of offerings in Nehemiah 12, 44. And at the same time, some were appointed over the rooms of the storehouse for the offerings, the first fruits, and the tithes. So it's three types of offerings. Offerings, first fruit, and tithes. Say it with me. Offerings, first fruits, and tithes. Now, this word first fruit is a Hebrew word, and it's pronounced reshith. So offerings, reshith, and tithes. It means the first, it first in place and time. It means beginning. It means leading. It means most important. It means chief, highest rank. Paramount, first hole. Interesting. This is what the Bible is saying, that this offering is given at the beginning of something. It could be, begin, be give, given at the beginning of a year, the beginning of a marriage, the beginning of a business. Let's say you open up a business and, and this, this month you make $5,000 in profit. What you would do, that's the only time you're going to be able to give a first fruit offering, is right there at the beginning of your, of your business, and you're going to give an offering based on the profits that you gave. And this is what it does. You're saying, God, I thank you for blessing me, and this is what I want you to do. Continue blessing me like this, and I'm acknowledging you're the source of my blessing. So what you're doing is giving a portion back to God, and you're saying, duplicate this. What are you doing? Giving something to God as you're saying what? 
give something for God to multiply. When God wanted to feed the 5,000, he got some loaves and fish. They put it in Jesus' hand. Jesus blessed it, and the multiplication happens. You get an opportunity to do that very same thing at the beginning of the year. You're giving God something that's valuable to you, and you're saying, bless this, multiply. He goes, I sure will. We'll get it over to you over and over and over again. You gave me something to multiply. Okay? So that's what it does. It's a first fruit. It's given at the beginning of the year. Now let's look at some, just two instructions on first fruit offerings. Instruction number one. God warns his people to not withhold given the tithes and the first fruit offerings. To withhold the tithe and the first fruit would cause withholding of blessing over our lives. God is saying, give me your best and first so that I can release my best and first over your life. Be careful what you do with the first. Exodus 22 and 29 says, thou shalt not delay to pay thy tithes and thy first fruits. In ICB in Exodus 22, it's another version, it says, do not hold back your offerings from the first of your harvest. All you're saying is, be careful that you don't hold back on something I command you to give. Understand, I'm not commanding you to give it because I need it. I'm commanding you to give it because I want to bless you. How many understand that? I'm not telling you plant seed because the dirt wants your seed. I'm commanding you to plant seed so you could get a harvest. I'm not commanding you to invest because I want your investment money. I'm commanding you to invest so you can have a profit. How many understand if you don't invest, there's no profit? If you don't plant seeds, there's no harvest. So when you bring the first fruit and you give your best and first to God, God says, thank you for giving me access to your life so I could bless you to the max. Somebody want to get blessed to the max. So don't withhold it because you'll be cheating yourself. Number two, God commands his people to bring him the very best of the first to the house of the Lord. So where we're supposed to bring that first fruit to the house of the Lord. Look what it says in Exodus 23, 9. As you harvest your crops or as you get increase in your life, bring the very best of the first to the house of the Lord your God. Why bring the very best of the first? Because I remember, I told you guys this, I think a couple weeks back. I'm living, in, I, I just moved and, and, and this house has an orange tree and I just received our first harvest of oranges. And I remember going out there and getting, uh, getting the, the oranges and I found out something about the oranges. They're not all the same size. And they're not all the same quality. And I started thinking about it. There were some real big juicy ones. And there was some that fell on the ground that had some scars. And, but I still picked them up. I still picked them up. So I got all of them. Some were smaller. Some were bigger. And God asked me, if you were bringing me a first fruit offering of your first harvest, which oranges would you give me? Would you give me the scarred ones? Would you give me the mushy ones? Would you give me the small ones and keep the best for yourself? Or would you give me your best? And this is what he told me. You'd be tempted to give me the leftovers and the small that you really didn't want. But he, he would say, you'd only be cheating yourself because what you put, the quality you put in my hands is the quality that I will multiply. So you set the DNA of what you want in return. And all he's saying, when you give your very best of your very first, this is what I can do. I could give you the very best of what I have in your life. But if you give me leftovers, understand God could only multiply what you give me. You understand that? So God's trying to get something to us. That's the idea, okay? So now, what is the response of the people in the Bible at this time when they heard about first fruits? The people responded with an enthusiastic yes. Say it with me, yes. Now, nobody has to say yes to this, but when we go through the blessings, you might want to say yes, because offerings are given out of free will. We're not hitting the streets and someone wants food and we're saying, okay, well, here you got it. What we do is we're glad to give it to you. Those little orphans, 
we're glad to take him in. When I go on the streets, um, our, our uh, holy warriors are going on the streets February 11th. Probably 200 of us are going to hit the streets on February 11th. And we're going to run in the people that are strung out on drugs. And what I'm going to do is love them. And this is what I'm going to do is offer a lot of them. Today you could get off the streets. We got a home that's ready for you. We got a team that's ready to help you. This could be your last day of living on the streets and being hopeless. homeless. Today's your day of freedom. We're here. And we do it with love. Someone say we do it with love. We're so excited to be able to open up the doors. And, and I believe we're going to rescue some people on February 11th like we do every single day. Isn't that good that we get to do this? So they responded with a yes. And Nehemiah 10.35 says, and we made ordinances. This is after, uh, after they found out about first fruits. To bring the first fruits of our ground and the first fruits of all the trees of all the fruit of all, the, all trees, year by year to the house of the Lord. So when they found out about the first fruits, they could, you know what? They said, why don't we just make it part of our culture and let's make it an ordinance and let's make it a law so we keep God first and keep the blessings of the first fruit over our nation, over our people. Let's not even make it an option. Let's make it a law so we stay blessed. That's what they were, how they responded. Now understand this. This is a spiritual law, but no one has to do it. This is not going to determine whether you go to heaven or anything like that. But it, it will determine how blessed you are. Because I've learned this. The faith that you use to give. The faith that you use to invest. The faith that you use to plant is the faith that God uses to get something to you. I'm going to understand that. So now, let's ask the question. What are the blessings of giving our first fruit offering? I'm going to, I'm going to give you a, a story before I jump in straight into the blessings. In the Bible, it's a biblical story. And it's a story of Solomon. How many of you ever heard of King Solomon? Have you ever heard of him, King Solomon? Well, King Solomon, I, I was looking up yesterday about uh, 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 King Solomon, how rich he was. I found out that King Solomon, he's in the Bible, was the richest man that ever lived. I look at who was number two. It was Rockefeller. He had 600 and some, something billion dollars at the end of his life. But King Solomon had, he was not a billionaire. He was a trillionaire. He had two point something. No one's a trillionaire on earth. There's countries that have trillions, but they're not a person that has trillions. King Solomon was a trillionaire. But then I started asking, well, how did he even become a trillionaire? How did that happen? Well, something really interested I found out as I read scripture. It was a first fruit offering that activated his success and his prosperity. This is what happened. King Solomon was the son of David, King David. King David was the one that killed Goliath. Now, after David killed Goliath, he went through a lot of process to become king. But when King, when king David became king, he was a very, very successful king. But then he got older and he was dying. He brought his son, Solomon. He says, Solomon, you're next. You're going to be the king. But there was a problem. Solomon was young. He was inexperienced. And he never had really the opportunity to build his leadership. His dad's dying. His dad just gives him instructions. He goes, look, this is what you need to do. Just follow the instructions of the Bible. Follow the instructions of Moses. And you'll have victory. You'll have success in your life. Just obey. So now King Solomon is like searching. I need, what, do I, what am I supposed to do? What would my dad do? And this is what he found out. My dad would give an offering to God. This is my opportunity. I just started being a king. Why don't I give a first fruit offering? He goes, and I'm going to bring something that means a lot to me. Crazy offering that he brought. You know what he brought? A thousand bulls. A thousand bulls. How do you even gather a thousand bulls? How do you herd a thousand bulls? Now, it was even worse than that. The offering was going to be done on a mountain. So he'd have to take those thousand bulls and herd them up a mountain and then kill them up there, shed their blood, and leave them up there. What a job. How do you even give an offering like that? I looked up and I found out what it was. If the, each cow was worth 2,000 or 5,000, the offering was worth 2.1 2 million to $5 million offering. Now, when he gave that first fruit offering, that night, something happened. 
that night, God came to him in a dream. Someone say, God came to him in a what? See, God cannot ignore a first fruit offering. He goes, when they're giving it to me, it gets my attention. And this is what God told King Solomon. He was a young king. He goes, what do you want? You must want something because you just gave me a first fruit offering. All of heaven has stopped. What do you want, Solomon? And you know what Solomon says? He goes, look, God, I'm a young leader. I don't know how to lead these people. Can you just give me wisdom to lead your people? And then God goes, you care about my people? Not only do you have a right heart, I have your heart. You have my heart. You want to bless people. See, we don't want to just be blessed to be blessed. We want to be a blessing to be a max blessing to others. I want to be a blessing, a conduit, or a distributor of God's blessing. So when he said that, you know what God told him? He goes, King Solomon, you could ask me for, for fame. I would have gave it to you. You could ask me for victory over every one of your enemies. I would have gave it to you. You could ask me for riches and wealth. I would have gave it to you. But you asked for wisdom? He goes, this is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to give you what you asked for, and then I'm also going to give you what you didn't ask for. You will have fame. You have perpetual victory over every one of your enemies, and you will have wealth that has never been seen on earth and never will be seen on earth ever again. King Solomon became rich at the moment he gave an offering, and this is what happened. It followed him for the rest of his life. It wasn't just a moment. It was a perpetual blessing on his life, and it was just one offering that, that turned it all around. How many are believing that there's a turnaround ready to happen in our church, in our cities, in our families? So let's look at blessing. Blessing number one. When the first... When the first is blessed, the whole is blessed. And I don't want this to be very complicated, but I'm going to read you a scripture. The first offering, first fruit offering, is, is described as a root. If, you, if the root is healthy, every branch on that tree is healthy. I'm going to understand that. If the root is not healthy, then every branch is not fed and it's not healthy. What he's saying, the first fruit offering it's the most important offering because it feeds all the branches. When the root is healthy, the family's healthy. Your finances become healthy. Your health becomes healthy. What he's saying is, this is the most important because it's the root. Let's look at this scripture here. In Romans eleven sixteen. 16, for the first fruit is holy. The first fruit is what? You know what it means? It belongs to the Lord. The lump is also holy. If the root is holy... So are the branches. All it's saying is, if the root is blessed, all of it is blessed. In Romans eleven sixteen, 16, in the GNT says, if the first piece of bread is given to God, then the whole loaf is also. And if the roots of a tree are offered to God, the branches are his also. What he's saying is, the first fruit offering gives me access to every part of your life. How many want to have God how many want God to gain access to every part of your life? That's why the first fruit offering is super, super important. What happens to the first happens to the whole. We see this again in 1 Corinthians 15 through 23. It says, but each one in, its, in, his, in his own order. Someone say order. First the first fruits. No, Christ, Christ the first fruits. Afterward, those who are Christ at his coming. All it's saying is there's an order. The first fruit sets the order. The first fruit sets the DNA. What, this is what it's saying. Jesus Christ was the first fruit. Someone say Jesus' first fruit. So this is what happened. Jesus resurrects from the dead. Now, this is what happens to the whole. Everyone that believes in Jesus, they will all resurrect to the, from the dead. Why? What happens to the first happens to the whole. All God is saying, and when you give me a first fruit offering, I'm going to bless it, but this is what's going to happen. It's going to give me access to your income for the rest of the year. It's going to give me access to your home for the rest of the year. It's going to give me access to your children for the rest of the year because when the, when the, when the, when the, the portion is, is, is holy, everything's holy. It all belongs to God. Now, second blessing, health and healing. Someone say health and healing. In Proverbs 3, it says, it will be health, healing to your flesh, and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. Think about this. An offering could give access 
to a branch in your life, and that branch is healing. A crazy how this offering, God's even promising, it could heal your body, give strength to your bones. I really believe that in this offering, someone is going to get healed as they give this offering in the name of Jesus. Why? Because it's, someone say promise. God said it. it's a promise. It'll be health to your body. Okay. Um, lesson number three, abundance and provision. How many want some abundance and provision? How many want health and healing, right? Come on. How many want the whole to be blessed? I, I don't think there's a blessing we don't want here. Look at Proverbs 3.10 says, so your barns will be filled with plenty. Now you might be saying, pastor, I don't have any barns, but this is all he's saying is everywhere there's a place of store and a place where you want a blessing, I'm going to fill that place. It could be your homes. Your home will be filled with blessing. Your kids will be filled with blessing. It could be a bank account getting started to get filled up. There's going to be some ideas. Your wisdom is going to be filled with blessing. That word filled means abundance. It means strength. It means to be armed for battle. I love this. God arms us for every battle we will ever face this year because we're given a first fruit offering. Check this out. A first fruit offering prepares you for every single battle. What he's saying is there's not going to be a battle that you're not ready for. This is going to set you up for victory in every single battle. How many want some perpetual victory? Doesn't matter what you're facing, you're ready for it. I love that. Because God doesn't even want, just want you to get a victory. He wants you to give it to someone else. But it's going to be filled with plenty. Barns, barns, which are storehouses, resources. But it's going to be filled with plenty. You know that word plenty means it's pronounced saba. Some will say saba. I know it don't sound very good, but it is good. Look at this. It's going to be filled with avalanche of prosperity. I love this. God has stored up an avalanche of blessing that he desires to release upon us. Our first fruit offering activates the avalanche. I love that. Our first fruit offering activates a what? How many are getting ready? You'd love to see an avalanche of God's blessing in your life. What activates the avalanche is a first fruit offering. I love it. Come on, plenty, an avalanche filled. I want all of it. Blessing number four is guaranteed breakthrough and victory in every battle. How many want guaranteed breakthrough in every battle? Do you believe that this year you'll have some battles? Do you believe that this year you have some trials and tribulations and difficulties? I understand that it's part of life. Don't give up. All God is saying, don't worry about it anymore because this, big, this battle, this trial, this tribulation, the difficulty you're going through will not end in defeat. It will end in victory. It will end, come on, it's going to end in promotion. It's going to end to your benefit. So now you're going to say, bring it all on, devil. We're ready for you. We got prepared early in the year. We fasted. We prayed. We showed up for impartation. We gave our first fruits. We are ready to fight. And we got a promise because every first fruit offering comes with a command of guaranteed perpetual victory, just like Solomon. I love it. This is what Solomon activated. And this is what it says in verse 10, Proverbs 11, I mean 3.10 says, and your vats will overflow with new wine. Now you say, what is a vat? It's a wine press. Say with me, wine press. Now, wine press represents pressure. It represents trials. It represents tribulations. All God is saying, God is promising us that all the pressures all the tri all tribulations, all the trials were turned into overflow. The vats will flow with overflow. Will turn into overflow. Will turn into new wine. All it means is this. After the trial will be new levels, new revelation, new anointing, new power, new wisdom. It will always lead to overflow. Well, God is saying, if that's the case, you're gonna, you could start celebrating right now. It doesn't matter what trials come my way, what pressure comes my way. It's going to end in my promotion. It's going to end with another level. It's going to end with me being skilled more than ever. Devil, what you meant for harm, God is going to turn around for good. I just found out it's early in the year. It's all set. I set myself up for maximum blessing. And when I gave 
my first fruit. The command of blessing, the command of overflow, the command, come on, breakthrough, the command of victory has been given to me. At that point, I received not only the command by obedience, I received the command of the blessing upon my life. I'm no longer expecting failure. I'm no longer expecting defeat. I'm no longer expecting, come on, pain and suffering. It's not going to end that way this year. It's going to end in victory after victory after victory. Growth, more growth, and more growth. Give God some praise that there's a command of blessing upon you. Say with me, overflow. That will overflow. Now that word overflow is a Hebrew word, parats. And I know it sounds like a disease. It means a break. It means breakthrough. It means break over limits. Right now, there's a business person that you're in this room. And you feel like there's an invisible wall that no matter how hard you work, it feels like it keeps pushing you back. And God says, if you would trust me with your business by giving a first fruit offering that means something to you like Solomon did, this is what I'm promising you, overflow. There's someone needs a breakthrough in their marriage, with their children, in their minds, in their creativity, in their emotions. And this is what he's saying. I promise you, if you bring me the first fruit, I command breakthrough over your life. There's no devil that can stop it. Come on. There's no circumstance that can stop it. There's no economy that can stop it. There's no government that can stop it. Well, God is saying, you bring me the first fruits and you will overflow. Your fats, your trials, your tribulations are going to turn into overflow. It's going to turn into breakthrough and you're going to break through it and you're going to break over it. Does anybody want some breakthrough in their lives? It's going to overflow with new wine, new wine, new wine. It means fresh new wine. It means fresh encounters with God. It means to be enthusiastic. All it's saying is you're going to be high on Jesus. Some of you guys are searching after a fake high. You're saying, man, I just need my high. You, there's a reason because you've not experienced the high of the Lord. Do you know the Bible tells you to get drunk in the spirit? You know what that means? That you're intoxicated. Come on. Come on. You're under the influence of the Spirit of God. You're under the influence of the wisdom of God. You're under the influence, come on, of the healing power of God. Is there anybody here that wants to be intoxicated by the Spirit? And God is saying, if you'll bring me the new wine, I will intoxicate you. So, man, you're different. I know, man. What happened to your eyes are different? I Look in my eyes. There's something there, isn't there? And, and it's not the weed. And it's not the cocaine. And it, come on. And it's not no drug. What I'm talking about, I started realizing that there was a high bigger than the high I kept going to. And there's someone that's going to get set free from your addiction because God's going to give you a new high. And you're going to say, this high doesn't have a hangover. This high doesn't rip me off. This high is not stealing my family. This high is graduating me. This high is taking me to another level. This high is giving me joy that's unspeakable, full of glory. The Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. God's going to give you a high that's going to give you fire in your life. You're no longer going to give up. You're going to walk through life with purpose, saying this year is a great year. I'm expecting the best. I've set myself up for it. Devil, we're ready for you. A first fruit offering comes with war. The devil wants your first because he wants his DNA to define the rest of your life. You guys get it? New wine. Whew. Pastor, do you get drunk once in a while? In the spirit. How about a little wine to take off the edge? I don't need a little wine to take off the edge. I got the Holy Spirit that takes off the edge. How about a little 40 ounce? I don't need a 40 ounce to take off the edge. How about a little weed? I don't need a little weed to take off the edge. I got the peace of the Lord. I'm telling you, the high that I have, you haven't touched yet. But when you experience the intoxication of the Spirit of God, there's no high that can, care, can be compared to it. Come on, does anybody want what God has for them? New wine. 
My family knows I'm crazy. They know I act like I'm high all the time. All of a sudden, I'm just, hallelujah. Right? I'm silly. I, I, I live a silly life at times. You know why? I'm not taking a lot of stuff serious. Because there's, I know there's somebody greater in he, me than whatever I'm facing in the world. I'm ready for life. I'm not going to sit there worried about the situation because I already defeated that situation when I put my faith in Jesus Christ this year. Come on. This year, I'm setting myself up and my family for the maximum blessing. <laughs> Last thing. How many want some guaranteed breakthrough and victory? I'm telling you, I, I'm living this. Every battle we face, we win. Every devil I face, we conquer. I'm not scared of no devil because Jesus already conquered every devil. I just need to get in position now. Some of you guys are being tormented. It's time for you to start resisting the devil. Put yourself, submit to God, start resisting the devil, and just start obeying God and watch God bless you with perpetual victory. Last blessing, number five. Blessing to rest on our homes. Now, this is very interesting. Ezekiel 44, 30. The best of all the first fruits of any kind. The best of all the first fruits. So it's the best oranges. You know, for some of us, our best is going to be, I'm going to give a dollar for every day, not 365 for others. Your best is not that because you could do more. But you're going to give your best. But look what it says. The best of all the first fruits of any kind. And every sacrifice of any kind from all of your sacrifices shall be the priests. Also, you shall give to the priests the first of your ground meal. But look at this, to cause. So you give the best first fruits of any kind to cause a blessing to rest on your home. It's crazy. It means, rest means it's going to remain, settle down, and never depart from your home. This is what it's saying. Blessing which means, which is, where Baraka means prosperity, will not visit your home, it will live in your home. Peace will not visit your home, it will live in your home. Praise, success, including financial success, and increase will not visit, it will live in it. How many want some of that prosperity, blessing, peace, and rest? Come on, to rest in your house. People, I've seen people do this. They're, they're insomniacs. I don't know if that's the way you say it, but it sounds like that was like offending an insomniac. But you could get set free from that in the name of Jesus. But they're, they're, they have no peace. They're hurting. I've had people come to my house, sit down on my sofa, and they just fall asleep. Haven't slept for weeks, months. And they say, I don't know what happened. When I went to your house, I felt peace, and I was able to rest. And I told him, you know why? My house has peace that lives in it. You know what that means? The division is leaving. The fighting is leaving. Come on. The uneasiness is leaving. The anxiety is leaving. The depression is leaving. Come on. The poverty is leaving because God is saying, I'm coming to live in your house and I'm not leaving because when you gave me the first fruit offering, you opened the door and when you opened the door, I came in. Wow. How many want that? to rest on your house, your family, your household, your sentence, your home. Now, understand, you've covered, we've covered a lot of scriptures on the first fruit. I could actually do a whole series on this. But it's in the Bible to give us secrets and keys to getting blessed. There's all kinds of secrets and keys in the Bible to experience a greater life. Scriptures are there to bless us never to hurt us. God wants to bless us. But he also wants us to be a blessing. Be blessed to be a... And we're going to continue doing that as a church. I want to thank every single one of you for, you know, be, saying yes to God, saying yes to this church. And those that are saying yes to this offering, get ready for these promises to be activated today over your house, over your, how many want perpetual victory? How many want, come on, you want the root to be blessed, so every branch, come on, how many want every branch to be blessed? 
How many want, come on, how many want some breakthrough? How many want some, come on, some intoxication? <laughs> some of the likes to get high, like, give me some of that. <laughs> Amen, you could have it. I'm not tempted to get high because I am high. <laughs> how many believe you could be like high on the joy of the Lord? Like, ah. All hell's breaking loose and you're still smiling. The devil will think you're crazy. Be like, why are you smiling? Because I got the joy of the Lord. You want some? No. <laughs> Come on, Christians. You should have bigger joy than your problems, than your situations. You're supposed to be overflowing. Come on, with the victory. Overflowing with the breakthrough. Overflowing with the healing. Overflowing with the prosperity. God is saying you're not supposed to be overflowing with anger and all those other negative things. I've called you to be filled with my presence, with my power. I want your vats to overflow. I want your bars, come on, to be filled so you can be a distribution center of my blessing. Give God some praise if you're receiving that. Okay, let's all stand up. God is good. This is what I want you to do. This is instructions. We've prayed for salvation already. But this is what I want to do. We're going to activate as you're called to be a blessing. Understand in this church, you're not going to wonder where our money goes. We live way beyond what's coming in. It comes in and we send it right out. We're launching churches in LA. We're launching, we launch a church in Arizona. And every one of those churches is seeing one thing happen. People are getting saved, delivered, set free. Demons are being cast out. People are being discipled in every single one. Pastor Robert visited one of the, uh, um, last week, one of the richest guys in this valley. His house has, I don't even know, 50, 200 acres, just crazy. He even built a lake on his property we could, we, where you could have jet skis and boats on it. He built it. It wasn't even there. But there was a problem. His wife was oppressed by demons. So they had, they had the money, but they needed someone that has the breakthrough. So you know what Pastor Robert did? He went over there and prayed over his wife. She got set free. And then, we, and then he prayed over her daughter. She got set free. And now they're coming to church. Come on. They're going to be there this Sunday worshiping God because there's a church. Come on. Right here in San Bernardino. We sponsored Arizona to get one of the richest people in the valley to get saved and delivered. They had the money, but they needed the anointing. And this is what we're doing all over America right now and the world eventually. Amen. So I'm going to pray. As you get, even if you gave online, what I want you to by faith, there's, there's these kiosks and I think there's some in the back. I want you to come up here and just put it in here by faith. That's all. Even if you give online. And then also one more thing. If there's a breakthrough that you're expecting, it's okay to put the breakthrough on it. Because if you promise this breakthrough with this offering, why don't you be, exercise your faith to another level. You promises it. Why don't you just define what the breakthrough you're looking for is? It could be joy, it could be peace, it could be your son getting saved, or it could be a financial breakthrough for your business, it could be salvation for your whole household, so whatever that is. But why don't you go ahead and activate your faith and give an offering for yourself, for your business, and for your future, but put something on there that you're believing for, if you have something. You don't have to put anything, but if there's something you're believing for, go ahead and take it to another level, and then give it that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring our offerings, I'm going to pray right now, we're going to bring it over here. And then um, we're dismissed. We're going to be here Wednesday night. You can sign up for the marriage um, Valentine's thing. And also, if you want to start a Bible study in your home, in your home, I'm going to be teaching on Thursday. We're going to be wearing the service. But on Thursday, I'm going to be teaching. And you could be here at 7 o'clock on Thursday. And I'm going to coach you how to start a Bible study in your home. Men, I would love for all, every man to come. And let's start being the priests and leaders of our home. The greatest thing that can ever happen, word into your home. When the word enters your home, you know what happens? The power to do miracles enters that home. It's always a precursor. First the word, then there was light. First the word, then there's breakthrough. First the word, then there's, there's resurrection. We got to get the word in our homes. It's our job as mothers and fathers to get the word in our home. Let's start a Bible study in our home every week just for an hour or so. 
And let's get God's word in there. So if you want to come and be trained, that's going to be next Thursday at 7 o'clock here in this building, okay? Father, we just lift up our first fruit offering right now. And we give it, Father God, as an act of faith. But also we trust you. We believe in you. You're our source. And we're not giving grudgingly. We're not giving because we have to. We're giving, Father, in faith. And we're also giving because we love you and we love people. But also we're believing your promise in your word that as we bring our first fruits, there'd be breakthrough, there'd be healing in our body, there'd be, Father, peace and, and blessing on our homes. We're believing that right now and that every trial we face will turn into victory every single time. This is going to be a year of growth, victory, healing, health. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's give it the church far. You could come up and bring it up here. And we're dismissed once we give our offering. God bless you guys. We love you. If you're first time, we thank you for coming. We only do this once a year. Next year, next week, we're going to start a, a series. I am. It's going to be awesome. We're going to discover who we are in the Lord. You do not want to miss it. God bless you. We love you. You want to get prayer. There will be some people here praying after service as well. We love you guys so much.